Garden Studios. This is the latest on my discast. I'm going to tell you about... So as you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll tell you later stuff. What's up? I'm JR. You're chilling. All right, let's get started. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the latest on my update that I'm willing to tell you about. So as you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll tell you later. Hello, my name is Jerome J. Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. So the topic we're going to talk about today, um. Well, the last time I, uh, last, or earlier this year on February 22nd, 2022, I, um, uh, expressed my concerns on longest running TV shows. And this, uh, episode and this topic, I'm going to talk about the shows that are getting reboot or had reboots. And it's because, um, ever since, um, I heard about the Powerpuff Girls reboot, that's the first time I heard the term reboot on the, show series or whatever but um anyways um i wanted to talk to you guys about on how i feel about these reboots coming up um the only ones i can think about is first it was the powerpuff girls reboot which premiered in 2016 that didn't turn out good um i saw other concepts and reboots such as courage to cali jog johnny bravo jimmy neutron uh kappa mikey um the other reboots that um I recently saw is Scooby-Doo, um, you know the new one, the adult theme Scooby-Doo, I'm going to talk about that in a minute because um, I had some really great concerns about that one, um, I heard about Say by the Bell reboot, I don't know how it's doing, but you know, I heard the uh, theme song to the new reboot of Say by the Bell is kind of garbage to me, and also, that's so Raven, which is now Raven's home, and do you know that, um, Raven's Home compared to Death So Raven is the only show to get rebooted out of all the Disney shows, which is Raven Simone. So I hope that's going well and it's still running today. Um, what else can I think of? Um, the Redgrass reboot. I just recently talked about that earlier this year. Um, I'm going to talk about it as well. I had concerns on that. Um, and also SpongeBob. It didn't get rebooted. It's still going as of today, but. It had two spin-offs, the Patrick Star Show and Camp Coral. Gonna be talking about that as well. Um, Powerpuff Girls, I'm gonna be talking about that as well too. Also, it had two more new reboots. The live action reboot, which is way swapped, uh, along with the adult theme Scooby-Doo. Um, and, you know, just a bunch of other stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. So, um, I hope you guys are ready for this serious topic. And if you don't like me talking about this topic, Please continue to click off this video and never come back. So, are you guys ready for me to talk about all this stuff that has been going on? All these reruns, all these reboots, you know, remakes, all this stuff. They can't uh, come up with their own ideas and all that stuff. So, you know, and also, oh yeah, I got to remember, I got one more to talk to you guys about. The She-Hulk, the woman version of the Hulk. So, why not, you know... Get all these other superheroes, but turn into a woman or gender swap, race swap, whatever, you know. So let's get this topic started and let's get popping. All right, guys. So this is the moment we all been waiting for. I wrote this script out since summer of 2021 last year, so I've been dying to talk about this topic for a very long time. You know, it's been on my head for a very long time, and I just really want to talk to you guys about it. So, uh, once again, if you're ready, let's go. So, at first, we're going to stop at the Powerpuff Girls because it's one of my favorite childhood cartoons beside Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Now, I did see a concept of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the reboot one, the Courage, Cowley, Dog, Kappa, Mikey, you know. I'm dying to see all these other fan art reboot concepts, you know. And we're going to talk about those as well. Um, But first, let me go to the Powerpuff Girls. Now, the Powerpuff Girls, originally created by Craig McCracken, and, you know, if you never knew who Craig McCracken is, he is the creator 
but one of the Cartoon Network creator that created the Powerpuff Girl, Dexter's Laboratory. He was involved in Dexter's Laboratory too, and you know all that other stuff. He was working on projects back in 1992, and the Powerpuff Girls really came off the bat. It was very popular. Had his own movie. Had had their own merchandise. I mean, it was popping until up to 2004 when they call it quits, or 2005 when they really call it quits. And Craig McCracken went on to something else, like creating Foster's Home for Imaginary Strands. But, oh yeah, I forgot that one too. You know, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is getting a reboot also by a preschool version, right? For Cartoon Network Preschool. So, yeah, so at least Craig McCracken's on board with it. He's creating this show. So, I can't give bad reviews about if Craig McCracken knows what he's doing or does he have the same charm. So, um... Let's go back to the Powerpuff Girls. So, Powerpuff Girls reboot. Now, what I have to say about the reboot is that, um, really, it did not have the same charm and the uh, same excitement as the old one. But, you know, and to top it all off, you know, if you really watch the Powerpuff Girls reboot, you know, and if you see the sky on every episode, you know, if you see the clouds, um, just look at the clouds, really. They look like period pads. The last time I talked about period pads, I talked about period pads the last time. Last newscast about someone putting period pads on a shoe. And here I am talking about period pads once again. What's up with period pads, people? I mean, you never... Let me stop talking about period pads. Really, come on now. So, um, I'm looking at this and, you know, everything has changed about the Powerpuff Girls. I mean, the original voice actor came back except the Powerpuff Girls. They had written Miss Bellum out and Miss King had her boobs removed because it was too sexual. And Miss Bellum was killed off the show because she was too sexual for the audience. I mean, she wasn't too sexual in the 1998 version, so... Why is she too sexual now? Which is, doesn't make sense. But you had three little preschool girls shaking their butts in front of the camera and getting high on candy, which is equivalent to drugs. And I talk about drugs two episodes ago. I mean, isn't that funny that I keep talking about the same topic over and over again? I mean, what's up with that? You know... Those creators right here really got on my bad side today already. And on top of it all off, with the live action reboot, you know, you see this right here. I'm looking at it right now. You see three pictures of the live action girls, you know, Chloe Bennett, Dove Cameron. I forgot her name, but she was mixed. So, you know, it's just very, look at that. Look at the second picture. And you see the three Reboot girls with their live action counterparts. So look at those people right there. I mean, I feel sorry for those people that have to do this crappy live action reboot. And let me tell you the funny part. Let me tell you the funny part. Professor Utonium in the live action reboot is actually black. He was race swapped. So um, if you're going to race, race swap people... And that's going to be the same thing for the new Scooby-Doo live, I mean, adult version of Scooby-Doo, Scoob, Velma, whatever. Because Scooby's not going to be in it. And, you know, there is a bunch of race swap crap going on everywhere in that um, show as well. So, wow. I mean, we have gone to a very bad start, people. And I just wanted to let you guys know of what's going on. On why people keep rebooting shows. Because you know why people want to reboot shows. They want to make bad quality cartoons. They run in ideas. Let me tell you why. Because they want to create something. For people to talk about. People to criticize. And people to give bad reviews about. So people can watch it. So that is why. So people make bad shows. So people can criticize. So people can watch. That's how money grows. That's the cash cow right there. So that's why the bad version of the Powerpuff Girls reboot is, you know, so bad that people are talking about it. People are watching. 
you know, people watching their video, pe people watching videos of the bad version of the Power Pop Girls. So, you know, and that's not all. Um, and another thing is, Craig McCracken is currently working on a new Power Pop Girl. Oh, I hope it's not like the 2016 one. That was bad enough. And uh, live action reboot, Craig McCracken isn't in that one either. So, um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what's going on. You know, it may be next year, maybe 2024, 2025. Who knows? So, yeah, that's what I want to talk to you guys about. But what else should I talk about? Should I talk about Velma next? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Velma next because this is, this is going to be very interesting, folks. Very interesting. Look at that. Velma Scooby-Doo reboot. That's not a Scooby-Doo if there's no Scooby-Doo in it. So, look at that. Wow. She was really way swap here. I mean, you can't expect characters to act their personality if they're going to be race swap. I mean, that bothered me already because if you change a character, people are not going to watch it. People are not going to respect the character they are, they are portrayed to be. That was the problem right there. That's the problem with reboots. That's their cash cow right there. Cash cow ain't classics and they can't come up with their own creativity. But, you know, remember back 10 years ago when you say the new cartoons are bad, upcoming shows, you know, such a thing, you know, and you asked Disney, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, all that stuff to bring back all those shows. You know, I thought for real that they're going to uh, bring it back in original form. But, you know, they had to somehow bring it back in the new style. You know, they mess everything up. They give them, give the character new looks, whatever. And, you know, and all of a sudden they get voice actors, different vo voice actors. You know, they make them young. The characters look younger, look older, look very weird. And then mixing them all all together and you know it's a bad show already so i hope you guys that asked to bring the old shows back i hope you guys learned your lesson from all this because you know reboots sometimes do not work out you know i thought y'all I, I mean personally i wanted the old shows to come back too so i can enjoy, enjoy my childhood again but you know all the reboots all that stuff instead of continuing make them younger it's a really bad combination right there so, um, now back to the Velma that I was looking at. So, um, yeah, if you see Velma in the reboot, you know, she was race swap. You know, she's black, Indian, whatever they want to call it. Not only they did Velma, they did Shaggy, they did, um, Daphne as well. And they killed off Scooby-Doo as well. Fred's still the same. Um, let me go to Shaggy. Shaggy. Now, wow, look what they did, Shaggy. And I feel sorry for those people that had to voice these actors. What did the company do? What did the producers do to get these people on board to voice these actors, be a part of this mess? So, what's going on with the, well, with the with them right there? That doesn't make sense at all. So, um, and let me go to let me go to uh, Daphne because. She is now Asian. Um, let's see. That's not right. No, 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 no. Hold on. Let me, let me go. Damn it. What the hell, man? Oh, here we go. Look at that. That's the kind of Daphne that you see, right? You know? And look at that. You know, she's Asian. She looks weird. She looks like, you know, one of them servers at the restaurants, the low-budget restaurants you see, like Chili's, Applebee's, all that stuff that get paid minimum wage just to serve. Wow, look at that. <laughs> wow. Wow, y'all really fucking up already. Don't talk about two reboots, and they are, they are already under my skin. So, <laughs> Wow, wow, y'all gotta do better and all that stuff. Um, and let's talk about the Rugrats next. Um, the Rugrats 2021 reboot. Um, 
And by the way, um, most of these reboots either come in tacky, 3D, and you know, all that stuff. Um, SpongeBob is 3D. Rugrats is now 3D. I mean, aren't they? I don't believe they're hand drawn anymore because you know it's getting expensive. It's getting expensive to produce more complicated. So now they're doing it on computer now. Um. If you run really watch Rugrats as a kid, you know you enjoy the uh, art, you enjoy the uh, comic acts, you know you enjoy the adventures and all that stuff. But now, here is the 2021 today's version of the Rugrats. So, um, if you see all these characters, you know they almost look the same, except uh, two things. Like, Angelica's hair is kind of weird. You know, if you see the back of it, it looks very weird. It doesn't look the same as the uh, the original reboot. And it made me feel some type of way about, you know, the Rugrats reboot. Now, um, right here, look at that. You see that um, the Rugrats reboot, the, the family members, the parents, Spike. Uh, Chucky's dad, Stu, and Drew. God damn, man, I can't even look at them right because they look all they look so weird as fuck. Because look at them, they look like oh my god, they look like one of them characters on Fanboy and Chum Chum. My god, look what they done to you. Why these people are turning us, taunting us with these reboots? I don't wanna. Man, god dang, man, look at that, wow, look, and not only that, the parents have new actors, voice actors, that is, and also, I mean, the voice actors are not the same, Stu is pretty accurate, I'd give him that, but Charles, Didi, Drew, Charlotte, no, no, they look they sound like they're in high school. And Sep Shad, they he sounded pretty so to me. Chucky, what did daddy tell you? Just like that, they don't have the same actors and grandpa. Don't let me get started on grandpa. Because that, he doesn't sound like an old man. He sound very young. He sound very young. And it kills me to talk about all these reboots right here. Kills me. It hurts my heart right here. It hurts. Hurts my heart, man. All right, moving on. All right, so let's talk about other reboots. Raven's Home, that's so Raven. You know that show was pretty decent. You know, on the original, that's so Raven, which premiered in two thousand three. I mean, it's the twenty twentieth anniversary um two months from now. So that's so Raven was a popular show on Disney, and Raven Simone was the main character. Along with her, 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 her little brother, Corey Baxter, her dad, Victor, her mom. I forgot what her mom's name is. Uh, Tanya. Yeah, Tanya. Tanya is Raven's mom's name. But, you know, her best friend, Chelsea, Eddie, you know, all these people. You know, the 2000s vibe. I wish I could go back in the 2000s where everything's spunky, everything's fun, everything's so Serious, everything is good back then. A good combination where you stay outside, play video games all day, or go outside, play, enjoy, uh, hang out with your friends, enjoy pizza, you know, enjoy candy, you know, sneak around, be sneaky against your strict parents. I mean, 2000s was a time to be alive, right? So that was my childhood right there, you know. And then uh, when the show ended in 2007, we had to wait 10 years before Raven returns with the new reboot, Raven's Home. Now, Raven is a single mother divorced uh, from Devon, and she has two kids named Nia and Booker. And right now, um, Nia is no longer on the show. Booker and Raven are still on the show, along with new characters. I don't remember their names, but, you know... Chelsea is no longer on the show either, but except on a few occasions, whatever, or I don't remember if Chelsea's still on the show, but, you know. Yeah, so Chelsea's still on, I don't, I don't know, but whatever, and, you know, Saved by the Bell, I couldn't say much about Saved by the Bell, um, I didn't really want to watch it because I'm not a fan of that either, especially with that catchy 
um, catchy, not catchy, I say, um, for the theme song, for the theme song that, you know, let's load up a little bit, catchy theme song that Saved by the Bell has, um, is not that good, so let me type it up to play for you guys. I'm going to enter it right here. Remixed by Lil La Yachi. I knew it. You know, when it has all these garbage rappers on stuff, garbage rappers on stuff, you know it's going to be bad. All right. You can't even hear what they're saying. It's so bad. They're running out of ideas. Yeah, they're running out of ideas. Yeah, I'm just reading a comment. <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, all these cards is making me laugh right now. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh my god! <laughs> Man, damn! <laughs> shit! Look at it! <laughs> okay, go read this one comment. It said, "Amazing! The neon effects really make up for this train wreck." I, for I have this problem too. I can break the glass from my voice if you listen closely. It's actually amazing. I don't know who signed off, but in season two line for Tracy Morgan's coming in well whatever so um wow look at that I just had a good laugh right there man I'm laughing right now because you know this reboots you know all these garbage reboots or whatever but you know Back to the topic. Um, I'm glad I had fun with that one, but you know, the other reboots, you know, the concepts I want to talk about, Jimmy Neutron reboot. You know, Jimmy Neutron, you know. Um, let's see. Jimmy Neutron reboot, you know. And you can go to this website too, Santiago.fandom.com, Jimmy Neutron 2023 series. Now to tell you the truth, it did say 2021 TV series before 2022. Now 2023. I bet I wouldn't be signed if it said 2024. Let me look at it right quick. Look. All right, looking at this. Let's see. Come on, if you load up already, come on. No, well, never mind. No, I don't have time. I don't have time for this. I mean, if you want to know about Jimmy Neutron, Jimmy Neutron is a boy genius that creates inventions. And he, he, he had a movie back 21 years ago, 2001, December 2001 at that, you know. And then he had a running series 2002 to 2006. So it hasn't been heard since the, the show ended. So here are the new concept characters right there. Um... You know, that's Jimmy right there. There's Sheen, Carl, Cindy, Libby, Betty, Nick. Now, what is Nick supposed to be? Um, is he supposed to be gay? Is he supposed to be transgender? What is going on here? Nicolette, Nick. Nicolette. Um, so, if you saying Nicolette, is that me? he a girl now? Um... I mean, you changing people's character here. Um, so if Nick's a girl, um, I wouldn't be surprised right there. Look at that. Um, now, now, oh, uh, the kids actually look like they're younger. They look like they're five years old. Look like they're in kindergarten, not in fifth grade. So that right there is you no know, right. They. Uh, reduce, you know, their 
reduce the, you know, their age and stuff, you know, same thing would happen to Susie Carmichael in the reboot, they change her from three years old to two years old, all that stuff, Angelica is still three, and Susie is two, what's up with that, why are uh, age swapping, race swapping, gender swapping, you know, it's crazy right here, folks, crazy right here. Again, let's look at Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's Laboratory. Yep, that's it. That's it. Look at that. Yeah. Dexter's Lab Eureka. Um, with that bean smile on his face. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, um, I did look at the, um, Reaction to Reboot from other Cartoon Network characters of Ed, Ed, and Eddie Reboot. Oh, yeah. Now, this kind of concept scared me wrong time. Yeah, thankfully, Ed, thankfully, Ed and Eddie is not being rebooted. But thank God. Thank you. There is no reboot. But, you know, they look like, you know, little kids to me than actual Teenagers or, you know, grown kids. Now, let's go to Courage account. Well, look at Courage of Cali, but the rebooted Courage of Cali dog that I recently saw that aired in 2014 sometime long ago. Um, it was actually pretty good. It was uh, good. You know, 3D motion, which, you know, I'd rather be 2D. But 3D with Courage of Cali Dog, as long as they show the same concept, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. But, you know, this one right here, you know, it kind of looks weird. You know, the concept right here looks very weird. See? Yeah. Looks very weird. Yeah. Looks very weird. But Scooby-Doo make Courage of Cali Dog. Wow. I haven't seen it yet, but I couldn't judge it, but it may be good, it may be bad. I have yet to watch it. But so Scooby Doo Meets Courage, you know, they had the same concept, same, you know, scare tactics, you know, as um as the old shows, you know. It's pretty good, you know. A little as long as they had the same concept, same feeling, same plot, whatever, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So, you know, um yeah. So, um, the other reboots that I mentioned, the Proud Family have a reboot, you know, the same concept, same heart, you know, same people that work on the show to make it as fresh, funky, you know, funny as it was before, you know, that's what I'm looking for right there, you know, I have yet to watch it, you know, it just, you know, may, they may have some different changes, but, you know, overall, um, it's pr I hope it's pretty good. I hope it's pretty good. You know, I like, I think I'm going to like it, but you know, um, yeah. So, um, right now, um, I just want to talk to you guys seriousness about the reboot because reboots, all this stuff that is, you know, because, you know, the reason I want to talk about this topic that is hanging over my head since, you know, 2016 when the Powerpuff Girls came out, you know, in 2016, it just had me on my mind that, you know, reboots can't always work for original cartoons. Make up your own ideas, people. People don't want their work copy. If I had my work copy, you know, I worked so hard for, I would be really upset. So, <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. So, right now, I want to talk about the last reboot that was on my mind. And that is the Hulk. The She-Hulk, that is. Stan Lee's creations that is thrown right at him. He's rolling his grave right now because the She-Hulk is acting like a she carry in real life. She acting crazy. She's acting entitled in real life. She's getting upset because the fans did not like her. Wow. 
that's really telling you that the show's already bad. You know, they should have scrapped it in the first place. And, you know, it's just like the She-Hulk is just getting upset. She's on her period. Wow. So, she is not having it. She's not having the hate here. So, that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Reboots are not always, always good. It's, sometimes reboots are good. Sometimes they aren't. You just have to come up with your own creations here. I don't want to get in too much into it. I don't know it. I don't want to watch it. It's really bad. There's enough YouTube videos about it. So, let's not talk about reboots ever again. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. If we stop talking about reboots, if we stop talking about the crappy shows, the shitty shows they're putting out, the Hollywood shows, you know, everything could go away. No more cartoons could get ruined or rebooted. That's it. That's it. I'm done. That's it. So, that's what I want to talk to you guys about on this topic. And hopefully, the next topic is going to be more fun, less stressful than the crap that I talked about today. Because, you know, I shouldn't be talking about this right now if people aren't making reboots. Because when people make reboots, they give people stuff to talk about and to criticize and to hate. That's how they get their money. So, I'm going to end this newscast right here, and I'll see you on the next newscast. So, until next time, I'm Jerome Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. I'm out. Peace out.